I don't know about you, but I hate the classroom. No, no, I'm serious. I really hated the classroom. When I was in high school, I would try to figure out what my escape route was going to be from the classroom. I often took multiple breaks. I would walk down the hall slowly, waiting for the bell to ring. And I would love when we had an occasional field trip, or when the teacher would be courageous enough to let us have class outside on the lawn. I always wanted to be a teacher, but I did not want to teach in a classroom. How was I going to be a teacher, but not teach in a classroom? By the time I was 22, I created youth and adult leadership programs with a primary focus being to train participants and educate participants in a new model of reimagining education, reimagining their learning environment. Today, I work on building the capacity of communities directly impacted by policing, surveillance, and incarceration. How do I do it? I use the jail site as the new classroom. 50% of the people locked up in LA County jails are, have no high school diploma. 88% of the people in the county jails are of color. Each of those persons locked up in those jails, they have family members. They come from some community here in LA County. I was a child that grew up outside of the jail site. My father, my brother, and uncle were all incarcerated inside of those jails. I would often visit, dreading the concrete buildings, the steel walls, the glass windows, the metal seats. The jails for me, they were terror. Nothing beautiful existed there. Nothing imaginative existed there. Nothing educative existed there. So when I began to work and take education into the streets, I knew that I would have loved to have met someone who was more than just a bell bondsman and was helping me organize to think about my future differently than the jail site was. That's what education provides, especially when we are reimagining education. It is a tool to help support the ideas that grow vision, vision that takes us towards action. Very few people would have thought that it would be a useful, it would be useful to organize and to teach outside of county jails. But on any given day, when we're organizing and teaching outside of the jail site, we meet anywhere from 50 to 100 people in a four hour organizing span. When we are out there, we teach a number of things. We teach about the county budget and how it's being used. We teach about the elected, elected officials, the ones that are uh, posting up the jails and, and uh, incarcerating our loved ones. We teach art workshops outside the jails. And most of all, we teach people that they can join a movement that is bigger than them and, help cre can cre and, help can, and it can help create long-lasting change. Another thing that is important about being outside the jail site is producing new forms of education. People see us come to them. Oftentimes, we make people show up to places that are inaccessible and unavailable to their lives. When we, when we meet community where they live, on their terms and their conditions, we help shift the conditions in which they come from. Educating myself and the team of folks directly impacted as the educating work I was born to do. This work is one of the imaginative. And oftentimes, public education, in its most rigid form, denies us our imagination. I had to imagine something different happening outside of those jails to actually feel like I could teach outside the jails. As you see here, the dandelion. I'm going to ask everybody in the audience to take a moment and close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Think about a dandelion. When was the first time you saw one? When was the first time you picked one up and made a wish? Think about what it meant to you. Think about how it impacted you. Now I want you all to know, you can open your eyes, a dandelion is a weed. 
It's seen as something that we've picked out of gardens that's unuseful. But if you do a little bit more research on the dandelion, it's actually medicinal. You can use the dandelion for stomach aches. You can use the dandelion uh, to rejuvenate your liver. And I, I, I talk to people about the dandelion as a symbol of hope. Because we, everyone in this audience, we're seen as, as weeds. We're seen as dandelions picked out of gardens. But instead, I ask us all to reimagine what that dandelion can bring to our communities. What do dandelions have to do with radically rethinking public education? Well, they help revitalize the imagination. They help us think differently about how to be in life. They help us create something new. When we step out of the classroom and take teaching into the streets, we interrupt the narrative of what it means to be a teacher, of who is the student. The student-teacher binary totally dissipates. I see the dandelion, this amazing network that literally spreads its seeds far and wide as our symbol of hope, resilience, and as an example of how we can be autonomous networks spreading the messages of freedom. I want to give you three examples of how we actually end up outside those jails and teaching people outside of jails. This January, we had, uh, we had a campaign called, called A Thousand Calls in 30 Days. And every single day, we went outside the jails. And as people were coming home, being released from the jails, as well as people going to go visit their loved ones, we explained to them that we were trying to fight for civilian oversight of the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department. We explained that there are five county board of supervisors, and three of those county board of supervisors have to say yes in order for a civilian oversight body to happen. But the next thing we did is we asked them to call their local supervisor. We taught them which district they lived in, who was their supervisor, who was the person that was going to be the one that would influence the next change. And literally, we were able to get over 200 people to make phone calls directly to their supervisor outside of the jails and say, I just got out of jail, and I still want to make a difference. We also are going to be launching art workshops at the jail site this summer, a 12-week summer series where we go out and we teach people how to paint. We teach people how to draw. We do theater workshops. And this is important for any of us who've been outside of those jails. They're dreadful and to see something different, to see a group of people that are trying to actually recreate that setting is huge. And the last thing that I think is most important is we are training people to be the teachers outside the jails. We have a program called the Dandelion Rising Leadership Institute, which trains young people, 16 to 24, and we work with the Youth Build Charter Schools around this project so that those young people then are able to go outside the jails and be the teachers. I want to close off this talk with an Audrey Lord quote. I'm going to ask everybody to close their eyes one last time. When we speak, we are afraid our words will not be heard or welcomed. But when we are silent, we are still afraid. So it's better to speak. Thank you.